Good for you. Thanks for the call. 458-TALK is a number. Good morning. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? Lisa. Hey, Lisa. Hey, you know, the Europeans have advanced the most clean-burning gasification, and when that proposition outlaws hydronic, hydronic, all that means is that it has piped water going through its jacket and back, and so they're outlawing gasification hydronic burners, the most clean kind. So none of those people who are for Prop 2 have done any of their homework whatsoever. So just everyone keep that in mind and uh, you know, tell your friends, you know, uh, that the, the people who are on that side have not done their homework, period. Thanks. Thank you, Lisa. Yeah, that's a that's a good point. Actually, uh, another thing relating to that is the borough had an exchange program where you could exchange your uh, non EPA approved stove or hydronic boiler for one that is EPA approved. And some of the stoves that that were part of the exchange program that people bought that the borough said these will be fine will be prohibited by Prop Two. And I, I don't know all the details of this story in the, the news minor. I just kind of read, uh, skimmed it a little bit in terms of why the injunction is being sought against it in terms of whether or not it should be removed from the ballot. But if it is not removed from the ballot, I really hope that people take the time to research the issue and just don't vote on the emotion. Oh, that smells bad. You know, I have not seen one actual scientific study yet that links the burning of wood to any of the health problems in this in this area. Every single study that I have seen has not been scientific. It has been an Im, uh, an incomplete study, and it has not been uh, what I would consider a peer review. In fact, it's not peer reviewed. None of them have been actual, honest to God, scientific studies. They've been funded by people who have an agenda to try to get rid of wood burning. And uh, anybody who claims that all oh, the studies show health problems related to wood smoking, you are a liar or you are an idiot. Oh, there's there's money involved. That's the reason. It, that's the reason it goes on. There's um, there's funding uh, for continued research. If if the problem goes away, right, or or if the problem didn't even exist, right. If the problem goes away, all of this ongoing research um, goes away too. And, and if you don't believe that, look at what happened when we closed down the IM program. What happened to all of those people in the borough that worked for the IM program? Shift. Did any of them hit the unemployment line? No. Not a single one. Every single one of them is now working with this air quality division trying to yep. find a way to come out and regulate well, our, the burning of wood. Take it to a different level. Let's say uh, drunk drivers. Okay, you have a drunk driver. So we take his car away for drunk driving. Well, the fact that we have drunk drivers, we need to take everyone's car away. What is the difference between that and there's a few people out there that we all know who they are. They're in the paper. Everyone talks about them. Their wood boilers are... I guess. I haven't been there. I don't know. But I'm going off what I've read. Their wood boilers are choking out their neighbors. They're stinky. That's so the main complaint. I can smell it. It smells bad. So Therefore, we're going it must to, be bad. So we're going to prohibit everyone from using them. And it's so ironic that these people want to pass this thing, and they're using the EPA, the sledgehammer of the EPA over their head for it, when the e- it bans EPA-approved devices. Yeah. We're, there, there's no logic in it whatsoever, and there's no difference in someone abusing their car or the right to travel and taking their car from them. Well, you better take everyone's car away from them. A couple guys are abusing their wood boilers and choking out their neighbors. Well, then obviously we would say they're violating their neighbor's right. And I don't – this right to breathe fresh air. No, they're violating their property rights. They take care of that problem. You don't take everyone out of the equation. We live in a community that relies on wood. We live in a community that has one of the largest coal sources in the world right down the road, and it's cheap. You and we're not, off and we're not using it. Not only well, are we not using it, we want to ban it. We want to ban, it. We want to ban the use you know, of it. And, and for people who think that somehow we're advocating for people to be able to burn dirty and, and choke out their neighbors, I mean, to me, it, I, I don't advocate for that at all. I, I, it is your responsibility to be clean in, in the same way that I say you don't have a right to go and dump your garbage into your neighbor's yard. No, it's well, individual <laughs> liberty and responsibility. Aaron, take it away. Go. London, one of the most condensed um, places in the world, right? I mean, they are packed in there. Every building's a two-story or a three-story or a four-story. There is no such thing as a ranch home in London because it's so condensed. What do they heat with? Coal. They've been using coal forever. And most of those buildings are two, three hundred years old. And I guarantee they don't have state-of-the-art coal burners. The whole place burns coal. And how many people there are dying? 
Uh, everybody. The entire city of London is dead. Well, we London's heard, one of the biggest consumers of coal in the world. We heard at one of the forums that um, Fairbank, the interior, uses about, spends approximately $300 million a year more than they need to. And that has some to do with uh, the high cost of fuel, obviously, and then obviously the efficiency of their homes. Okay. Well... So what we want to do is actually take some of the cheap things that people can use to heat their home and make it even more expensive. And why? Because, well, the EPA says if we don't do such and such, I think the most I've heard is about $5 million of federal funding we wouldn't get. What if it's 10? What if it's 50? If we tell the EPA, nope, get out of here. You are no longer part of our Go business. burn this in your wood stack. Go, here's some, yeah, exactly. So they take off. Well, we do what we want to do. We burn what we need to burn, and we can do it efficiently. We have technology. What, what that was that number out. we spent? How much more than we need to? Three hundred million. So, so if we don't get there five million dollars, and we to burn what we want, we could end up saving two hundred ninety-five million dollars. Right, but I, I firmly believe the difference there is that the five million, and I don't know if it's five, maybe ten. That money goes to the borough government across the river there. The difference is, why do you think, yeah, of course they don't want to get rid of that because they get that money. Well, how about the people that live here saving the $300 million bucks? What? Who cares if the borough doesn't get $5 million? We what? get to save 300 <laughs> And what would that $300 million do if people were able to say that? They could actually oh. afford to make upgrades in their homes. They could actually afford to upgrade their furnaces. But if they upgraded their homes, then they're going to see their home values increase, which means their property tax will increase. Yeah, I think that... Uh, You know what? That guy that works for the IRS, he had a great idea, and I'm all for it, too. We should have a – I don't even want to say ordinance. We should have something that says if you want to upgrade your home – we talk about beautifying Fairbanks. Upgrade your home. We won't charge you more taxes for it. Put the siding on. Do whatever. I mean, Get rid of the blue tarp and on put there. on some new roofing. Put the roof on. We're not going to tax you more for it. Live your American dream. Isn't that what the American dream is? Have your, your property, your home. That's the quote-unquote American dream. Well, let's let them have it instead of taxing them for it and taking it. Um, All right. Yeah, one of the things they do um, in in China is your uh, – well, your your first home doesn't have property tax. Um, they're they're honest. No one owns property. You have a land lease. Here here we pretend we own property, but we don't. Um, also, the the tax, like if you're a business or if you have a second home, the tax is fixed. The assessed value is based on the land that the structure is built on. So you could build a gold temple on the land that's worth you know twenty billion dollars, and your tax doesn't go up at all. Your tax and it's and it's fixed. It's like a contractual agreement when you get the land lease. This is. This is what you will be taxed on, no matter what you put on this. So they know more about economics than we do, because if we didn't, if we did that here, for one, people that own two pieces of property, like people own up on the Saltier, a a recreational property, they get taxed for that property too. They get absolutely zero, none. I mean, we talk about paying the fair share and government services. Well, they don't get squat, so why do they have to pay it again? And if we would do that with people that want to upgrade their homes and businesses that want to make their businesses look nicer so people actually look at this town and go oh i'd like to live there what? because i don't see blue tarps everywhere but what would that do to economy i mean people would be building and you would call up your local carpenter and say hey you know what i'm not going to get taxed for this now come over inside my house come uh, over and roof my room i'm roof. sorry come there's a wait there's a waiting list down. josh because i'm too busy exactly yeah. <laughs> yeah me and steve brought this up what six months ago same same con- conversation. One of my buddies just got back from England. I want to bring up London again. And when he got back, he was telling me that, um, he said, the weirdest thing when I was there is there was so many buildings that were two, 300 years old that weren't completed. He said just about every other building wasn't sighted or was missing parts of it. Um they had boarded up windows, even though people lived there, and they just, in general, most of the buildings there were unfinished, and he was asking me why, why I thought that was, because their property taxes are exactly like ours. They go up with improvements. So there's 300-year-old buildings that still haven't had the siding put on them. <laughs> yeah, that's, you know, it's interesting um, with the candidate forums in relation to that. There's there's a few people running who really understand economics, um, like from an academic sense, and they understand incentives, and they talk about it, you know, using whatever language, because people won't understand it, but they understand it. They understand incentive structures and that people respond to incentives. And so why don't they understand the negative incentive that is property tax? 
We've and, got all, and the all other. Lines. Okay, yeah. The uh, one other thing is, if you changed it, if you had a fixed tax on the property, that would mean the only way the borough could increase its revenue is by selling the property it owns and putting oh, it in the hands of people. Oh snap! Right. Oh no. All right. All four lines are on hold. Four five eight. Tonga is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Steve, real quick. I'd like to give one more example of jury nullification: the Vietnam War draft dodgers, and God bless those soldiers. A lot of people thought that was a political war. And you can check this out. Those federal judges allowed the defense to argue jury nullification before the jury regarding political war were found not guilty. And those judges that didn't allow the instructions were found guilty. And you can call 1-800-TELL-JURY or FIJA.org, F-I-J-A.org. Have a good day. Thank you, and good luck, you boys. Thank you, Frank. Frank. 458-DOG is the number. Good morning. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hello. Hey, who is this? Yeah, this is Carl. Hey, what's on your mind? Well, um, I've been in this borough for over 40 years, and uh, there was a time I heard that it was against borough code to build a house that was heated with electricity. So that might still be on the books, but that's probably a number one reason why we don't have, like, uh, to sit in a dam or or a real environmentally clean heating sources for our homes. All right. Thanks for your point of view, Carl. 458 Talk is the number we move on. Good morning, Car- caller. Who's this? Hey, hey it's Troy. I want to ask you one thing about this uh, borough assessment on property. Go ahead, Troy. Several years ago, a friend of mine, uh, uh, well, the borough assessment, they came by in their $30,000 truck, never got out of it, sent him a bill, said, well, you got a new rental cabin. The guy said, a rental cap in my ass. He said, that thing's been there for 10 years. It's a storage shed. And then you got to go through all the rigmarole and file all these papers, have them come back and reassess his property. You know, so, so what's up with that? I mean. Yeah, what's yeah. up with a lot of that stuff? Just like we're seeing they, they, people. They own... have to assume it was a rental cap and it was a storage shed. Yeah, it's well, it's the same with any uh, government accusation. The burden of proof is supposed to be on the accuser. But exactly. it's actually on the accused if you're exactly. going up against the state. And it cost and it cost him even more because he was it cost, paying yeah, he was money. paying the salary of the guy who was assessing his property through his property <laughs> tax. <laughs> I think we got a problem on that one. I hey, appreciate the call. Thank you very much. Four five eight talk is the number. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Good morning. Hey, who is this? This is Trevor Stice. How you doing, guys? Hey, Trevor. Good. good. What's on your mind? Amazing. All right. I already did the early voting and. Uh, Good luck to you guys. Um, appreciate the show all the time. Thanks. Um, I went to the interior wood burners meeting that the uh, borough put on, the dog and pony show. Mm-hmm. And uh, the thing I noticed was it was not so much of an informational presentation. Um, I remember the the classes I went through in school. Got about 30 seconds. College stuff. And you can skew graphs to support whatever you want it to be, but they make great visuals. The personal testimony of the people who burned wood sounded more like a confessional. I was more, I was more swayed by the factual presentations that the uh, hydronic heater in the parking lot was burning, but nothing coming out of it nice. than I was with all the stuff they showed in that little propaganda meeting. Hey, thanks for the call. I appreciate it. Gentlemen, really quick, the action point for this week. Read about jury nullification. Read some, yeah. Look up Lysander Spooner jury nullification. We'll post it on the blog, which is patriotslament.blogspot.com. So you are advocating for people to research on their own jury nullification. Right, whether they love it or hate it. Vote Absolutely. against Prop 2. All right, that's it for the day. Patriots Lament. Dot blogspat dot org. And we'll see you next week on Patriots Lament. Health Talk is next.